Hello everyone and welcome to Creativity Unleashed. In today's video, we are going to be focusing on the linear rails and the rack and pinion system and getting the gantry done. So I hope you guys enjoy. Hey, let's on the club. All right, so we're going to work on putting down the linear rails. We of course need them to be extremely straight and also parallel to each other. And what, after quite a bit of thought and talking to some friends about it, what we've come up with is one of the best ways we can think of is to stretch string line across where we want it to go and use probably like a magnet so it's easy to hold it in place. Um, where we want it and then put really good tension on it. And once we measure across to both sides and make sure they're perfectly parallel, they're tensioned really well so we know they're really straight, then we'll plan to take some spray paint and spray across the top of the string. So when we remove the string, it'll leave a line marked on the metal where we'll know that's the straight line that we'll need to put the um, circulating linear rails on top of and mark out the holes, drill all the holes, fit it in place, and check everything and see how accurate we are. We of course can always play with the holes a little bit and wiggle it, but it, we want it as close as possible. We also have a long level to try to hold the linear rails a little straighter because they're not perfect from the factory. Hopefully the level is a little bit closer with a good new level, so it should be. And then we're drilling the segment of holes, and then we're staggering, we're moving the linear rail about halfway down or a little bit more, and then dropping in a few bolts so that we have the pin spacing the same, so that it doesn't matter how you would move the linear rails, the whole spacing is the same. And so then we're readjusting, making sure everything is perfectly straight as we possibly can, and we're drilling, and we're gonna just do that the whole way across, double check ourselves a lot and do the same thing on the other side. And of course, these holes are just slightly bigger than they need to be, which means that we can adjust the linear rails just a little bit and then tighten them and lock them down exactly where we want them later. It's difficult to find linear rails that are long enough to go the entire length of your CNC machine. So often you're going to have to do some joining work and that is probably one of the most um, finicky detailed parts of it and so we're just trying to join a piece that we cut. Um, there is actually three joints on the length of the table and so we played with it for quite a while and got it quite nice. Two person job. It um, looks fairly similar actually. We, we pushed it back again with memory tightened. It. We found that using the 2x72 inch belt grinder with a slight jig to hold it at 90 degrees worked really well for grinding them on both ends and ensuring that the joints were nice and tight. All right, so we have the linear rail all attached and put on the one side and it's all running really well. And as far as we can tell, we've got it extremely straight. And we're just onto the other side, getting everything aligned. You may be wondering why we didn't measure off of the edge of the table for the positioning of the linear rails, and that's because with all the welding that was done to the C-channels, they did get a little bit warped, and of course the C-channels didn't come perfectly straight. If you were using material that happened to be like incredibly straight, you may be able to get away with doing that. But often you'll find that there is very few materials that you can purchase that are straight enough. Extruded aluminum is one of the straightest options, but I didn't have that available here. So we're on to getting started with the rack and pinion drive system. And one of the things I wanted to ensure is that the rack was in line with the linear rails. So I'm welding a piece of rod onto a scrap piece of angle iron that is bolted to the linear rail. And then I'm adding a little scrap piece of metal that has a hole drilled in it with a screw there that slides in and out that's um, held very tight so that it can't move up or down. And we're scribing a line onto the side of the CNC machine so that we can have an accurate reference point to use the mag drill to drill the holes and mount the, the brackets. So these brackets are from Avid CNC. 
Um, they have um, a lot of really helpful parts if you want to achieve good, accurate, high-quality machines. It appears Avid CNC has discontinued the line of rack and pinion drive system that I'm using currently right now. They have a more upgraded system that, of course, is more expensive. So I'm using a mag drill to drill the holes. This is my first time to actually use a magnetic drill. I purchased this one from Vivor. It was on a sale for, I think, around $170. This one can do up to a 2-inch hole, and I've been incredibly impressed with it. I have no idea how I did a, had a metal working shop without one of these, um, but they are extremely nice. I can't tell you about all the other companies and brands and stuff since it's my very first one, but I've been very happy with it so far. So I'm just getting started on making the gantry base support out of a piece of angle iron and this will attach directly to the linear rails and that um, tying several circulating linear rails together with some space provides more rigidity. There is the base for the gantry. Of course the weight is important as you start designing the gantry to keep it lightweight. Here's the rack and pinion drive system that's from Avid CNC. It um, is gear reduced, which um, makes the motor essentially more powerful and more accurate. And it also has a spring mechanism that tensions the um, drive to the gear rack. And you can see right here, I'm attaching a nut inside of a piece of pipe and getting that welded captive in place. And this is part of the, the mount that will actually um, attach the the rack and pinion drive system that holds the motor. You'll see that in just a second. Everything needs to be extremely square and accurate, so I'm just using the bandsaw and of course screwing things up on the belt grinder. So the rack and pinion drive system actually hang off of this and swivel, so it's important that it's very square and parallel and um, meets up accurately so that the rack and pinion drive system that the drive actually engages properly with the teeth on the rack. And so as long as you ensure that that's all um, working out well, it's a really simple way to attach it and um, seems to work out really well so far. So now I'm cutting the parts for the tensioning mechanism on the rack and pinion drive system. So I'm just using a, a piece of pipe, I believe inch and a half here, and a piece of about 3 sixteenths inch um, plate and that's getting fully welded and then I'm grinding everything smooth on part of it and I'm marking the placement for the spring tensioning bracket using the center punch and the drill press as standard practice and then tapping the hole for the screw that will attach the spring tensioning device. And of course using a magnet to hold the position while I get a tack and then getting it welded out sufficiently. As we get into building the gantry we want to use a bit different principles. We want it to be extremely light but very rigid. The heavier the gantry is it'll put a lot more stress on the motors. So right now we're going to cut out the gantry support. These go on the side and connect to the rails. So I just did some CAD, some Cardboard David design here, and we'll be using that as a template. The plasma cutter I'm using is the Hypertherm Power Max 30. It's an American-made plasma cutter, and they are probably the top of the line in plasma cutters. But for the actual CNC machine, I'm planning to be using the Everlast 100 amp plasma cutter. And that one has a capacity to be able to pierce three quarter inch steel. And of course, if you are starting from an edge or you have a pre-drill, it apparently can do up to two inches of steel. I would love to use a hypertherm, but the cost is several times more. Nowadays, plasma cutter is very wildly in price and capability, but one of the key things to make better quality cuts is to have clean dry air so I'm using a refrigerant air dryer and that makes a huge difference. You can see we're cleaning up the parts 
with the belt grinder again. There's a whole lot of ways of driving the x-axis. A lot of people use even a drive shaft with one single motor or a different chain drive or belt drives. But I think using two motors in the rack and pinion system is one of the easiest ways to achieve a very um, consistent uh, movement without fishtailing. You can see we're using a square, a nice large framing square to check the alignment of the gantry supports and making sure that they are plumb and uh, square to the linear rails. And we're getting those welded in place, of course, with the help of the MagSwitch 600. So right now I'm cutting out the plates that attach to the gantry supports and these will actually have the metal tubing that's going across as the actual gantry. And that makes them detachable so you can um, detach the gantry. So I'm getting them clamped into place and grinding them um, to ensure that they're even to each other. Getting some tack welds on them so that when we take them off we can drill the holes and then later just grind off the little tacks and they'll be able to separate conveniently. So now we're on to disassembly and we're going to prep for drilling. Almost all the bolts that I'm using on the gantry are 5 sixteenths of an inch. I think it's convenient to use something that's sort of standard when you can so that when you're working on the table or disassembling, you're able to um, just grab a socket or wrench of the right size. So here we're just drilling the holes. So I'm just welding the nuts on captive and these are on the inside so that way when you go to disassemble it or reassemble it, it makes it very convenient. And here we're just adding a 1x2 gantry support out of some thin wall 1.6 millimeter tubing and that stiffens it up so that the gantry doesn't kind of sway back and forth. So now we're on to building the actual gantry and so I'm just using some one and a half inch by three inch rectangular tubing. This is 1.6 millimeter thick and then I'm just using some square tubing as separations and I have one on its side and one upright and that um, adds a lot more rigidity and stiffness to it. And we're just getting a lot of clamps and everything to keep it as straight as possible. And I'm not fully welding the tubing because I don't want it to distort, but I'm just welding the four corners on those um, spacers. And then after getting it welded up, we're putting it in the Ellis 1800 bandsaw and cutting it, which it does such a good job. You really don't need to do much else. And so now you can see we're sliding it over where the captive nuts are um, weld it in place using some magnets to hold it in position and then we're grabbing ourselves a really long pipe clamp and getting that nicely tightened down. Yeah, so now they're showing opposite things, which is fine. Fine, we'll just, they're just, we'll just slightly leave it, wider. Leave it at that, I think. Once we ensured everything was just how we wanted it, um, on to welding, getting the thing all tacked up, and then disassembling a little bit here and welding it fully out. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm using a straight edge to measure off of the linear rails at the bottom. And I've put some marks here and there. And we've done, of course, the same thing on the other side of the gantry over there. And we'll just use the string line and paint technique. So now we're back on to installing the linear rails, but in this situation we're pre-drilling with a smaller hole and then I'm using a drilling tap to thread each of the holes and then we're using the screws and just threading them into the, the holes and that worked out pretty well. Well, this pretty much wraps up the installation of the linear rails and part of the rack and pinion drive system. This here is the Y-axis plate um, just being attached up into position, getting everything back into position. And we're going to be wrapping up this video here. I will see you in the next one shortly. I hope you're enjoying. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. So we got the linear rails put on. We added a 316 plate to the linear rails. Um, so just drilled some holes there. We've also added some aluminum spacer plates to offset the Z axis just because of how it, um, it mounts. It would um, interfere with the screws. We could have tried to countersink it, but the plate's not super thick. So we just decided to go about that way. So, uh, so as you can see, now we have a very good solid uh, action this way. Um, so we just have to put the, the rack and pinion system here, some kind of a mount for the motor, and of course limit switches and all of that, but it is getting really close to being functional. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.